this was, I live in the, I live in the UK, I live in Oxfordshire, England, and uh, the BBC has done a really good job of promoting their UK candidate. Um, and one of them, a female, uh, was heard on TV saying, I want to have the first baby on Mars. And I have to admit, when I, so I left the Mars Society to actually go have a family. I got married, I went to England to go have babies, basically. So being a parent was really, imp is, is really important to me. I want to make sure that I'm ready, that I know, you know, I, have, I get some lessons from expert parents, and uh, uh, you know, I, I make sure I have enough money in the bank, I've got a good place for this baby to, to be raised. And this girl who, we're not even sure if, can, can we get you to Mars? Are you gonna survive on Mars? Well, she goes out and says something really bold, like, well, I wanna be the first one to have a first baby on Mars. I think, I find it a very bold and courageous thing to say. And I also thought, a bit naive. I was, I was angry, I have to say, I was angry and upset. I thought, gosh, the audacity of her to make a statement like that. And I know that, and then I started thinking, um, wait a minute. This is, this is something we haven't really thought about. Uh, you know, it's gonna have to happen sooner or later. There's gonna be humans on Mars, we're gonna have babies, we're, if we wanna uh, settle Mars and colonize Mars and start a whole new humanity there, it's gonna have to happen sooner or later. The smart thing to do is to start thinking about it now. Start getting women's input now, start uh, archiving this information, gathering their opinions, and, and forming something that really women want to have a say in what happens on a new planet. And because uh, we haven't had much of a say on this planet. Uh, there weren't four mothers of America in the Constitution. There are four fathers. Um, <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So I thought this is a great opportunity. Let's do this, why not? I mean, how much, so, you know, crazy can it sound? Uh, yeah, I want to send humans to Mars. I mean, that was the problem I had 13 years ago, or even before that. Um, so why don't I just go for something bold like she did? She was, you know, I want to say the audacity of her, but really she was an inspiration, right? So she, you know, she spurned this thought process in me um, to start realizing that it doesn't hurt to plan. I, I've always said that, you know, uh, the seeds of Mars, and I, I work in education, so I want to plant the seeds of humans to Mars. Well, let's plant a seed about what do we, what do women want on a new planet? And I want, um, let's see, you know, I want fairness and workability and integrity and fun, you know, for my children. So I think, you know, we, I'm pretty lucky to have been born in America. And the fact that I can make a choice to have a child in America or in England, I'm very fortunate to have that choice. And not a lot of women have that choice uh, on this earth. Um, and I wanna make sure that when women go to Mars, um, that, that all these things are sorted, that we don't have to feel bad for where we're born on Mars or where we're gonna have a baby on Mars. I want all those things sorted before we get to this planet that we haven't had a chance to really make a change here on this on, on Earth. So here are some of the new movements that have been currently happening for women on this planet on Earth. <laughs> and I just finished actually on my plane right here, I was reading this book called by Sheryl Sandberg, you may know a little a company called Facebook. She's the COO and she wrote a, uh, wrote a book called Lean In. And basically what she says from really this great book uh, that if we want to solve the problems for women on this planet, that we need to create women leaders in, in business. So she's very business focused, create, but, but really just women stepping up. And, and I, think, um, <laughs> I think typically, you know, women don't usually jump into the deep end. I think it's an easier thing for men to just jump into the deep end. And some of her statistics were, excuse me, if there's a job application, for instance, and there's so much qualifications, uh, men or uh, women will look at it and think, you know, I have to look at all the qualifications and make sure I have them all before I apply. And she says that men, 60% uh, is good enough and I'll apply. You know, so really women just jump in. You are good enough, you do have what it takes, and, in, and you're gonna learn anyway. And even though, and men don't worry about having 100% of the knowledge or qualifications but women do, so that's something we need to get over and get past and, and really just go for it and be courageous. 
Um, another organization in the UK that just started, I think, late last year called He for She, started by Emma Watson, she's an actress, you know her as Hermione from Harry Potter. Um, and she started an organization that advocates male support. So that's why it's called He for She, getting men to support women in leadership roles. And now, so that, that kind of helped me culminate what Women on Mars is about and what I want it to be and what we want to create. Uh, Women on Mars, we want to create a new humanity on this world and the next. I would love for some of these ideas that we create here on, on, the, on Earth for Mars to trickle down to Earth. Like I said in the beginning, change is hard. Um, and I'm, we're probably not going to change everything on Earth. Um, but maybe some of the things that we do and some of the things that we model and some of the things that we create could make some small changes here on Earth. That would be great. Uh, so what we want to focus on is creating women leaders in space exploration. That's our primary focus for women on Mars. Uh, we want to acknowledge and promote men who support women in space exploration and science and technology. We want to gather and archive women's input for a new humanity on Mars. We basically want to create the four mothers for Mars. So here is our, our logo. And it was, um, I, was um, I have a background in, in graphic design and in geology. So I, have, I hold both art and science and, and um, uh, I really love things looking good. <laughs> And I had a really hard time figuring out what I was going to do. Was I going to do the female sign, which that's get used over and over again for, for Mars. And uh, one of my you know, biggest heroes in, uh, is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and I remember when I was really young, just being in high school and, and seeing some of his work at going to a museum and, and just being in awe. This is actually my favorite image from Leonardo da Vinci. And I thought, this is just natural for me. Uh, to be a part of our logo. And it turns out that Leonardo da Vinci is head of a woman was illustrated about 500 years ago. And he illustrated to show that women are men's biological and mental equals. And he was just studying the, the, the female form. And so I thought, this has to be a part of our logo. So I you know, just meshed the two together, women on Mars. And that's, that's uh, what we're sticking with. We absolutely are very proud of it. So women on Mars, so we're an organization that is a champion for women, but not women of all ages. I want to make sure that we set up. It young, young people are very important to me. I am a secondary teacher. I'm a, a, I also teach ninth grade science. And uh, most of the work that the Mars Society does uh, focuses on graduate students, some undergraduate students, PhD candidates, postgrads, NASA researchers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one of my first companies that I started uh, with the Mars Society is called Marsonauts Incorporated. And the reason I, I started that was to uh, create something for the younger uh, generation, for elementary school students. Because I think we formulate our interests or get inspiration when we're seven or eight years old. Maybe some people even younger, four or five years old. Uh, for me, I was inspired very young. I was fortunate enough to have a father who was an engineer um, who was, uh, came from a huge family in the Central, Central Valley of California and was, took a courageous risk himself and moved us out to San Jose, California and worked for um, Lockheed Martin and was a contractor at NASA. Um, so I got a lot of uh, rich experiences as a result. And I want to give those rich, same rich experiences to other girls of a similar age because I moved out to Silicon Valley when I was five. I got to see things like, I think I mentioned, like the SR-71 actually take off from the tarmac at Beale Air Force Base in California. That was amazing. I was literally standing on the side <laughs> and, uh, and all I saw were the two little red engines and that was it. It was quick. Um, we are a stand for women to be acknowledged as capable and valued. That's extremely important to us. Uh, and we would love it for the world to acknowledge that women are capable and valued, but we're just going to start with our own little group of, you know, Mars-focused uh, uh, women in space exploration. Uh, and we hope that at some point the world catches on and realizes this. Uh, we will offer women encouragement, empowerment, and mentorship. We will promote teams, and I haven't actually talked about teams yet. I will. Um, team subjects: technology, engineering, arts are very important. Math and science subjects. And also uh, condone teamwork, collaboration, very important teamwork. Um, and then women being a p those leaders in those teams as well. Uh, create and sustain a Women on Mars exploration network. 
W O M E N. That's kind of what we're. That's our next big task, I think, is to kind of what is that going to look like? But that was a, that was a great idea that was given to me by Kate Artless Gray. She's Space Kate, if you might know her. She's out of the UK and um, she's fantastic. So we're working with her as well. So teams. So this is a third of what we are um, working together. This is just a logo from our our website and. Teams, teams has two ideas, of course. First, it's team subject, it's taken from STEM, right? STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. It doesn't include art. So some people say STEAM, they put an A in there and make a STEAM, and that's great. I really appreciate that they add art, but I wanted it to be something more meaningful, something that I really, really believe in, which is collaboration and working together, because I don't know how we're gonna get to Mars if we don't. So teams is really important, so it's dual. It means these subjects, plus it means working together. We are gonna encourage teamwork, communication, super important, and collaboration. We wanna uh, provide support workshops and mentorships and team subjects, I skipped that one. We wanna create challenges, competitions, and have girls and women as the leads of these groups. We wanna encourage women to take on leadership roles at school, work, and in their communities. I, I remember, um, <laughs> When I was first asked to be executive director, Robert Zubrin called me. I was actually at graduate school in Scotland. And I just said, Robert, I just, I just started graduate school. You want me to be executive director? And, uh, and I did. I said yes. <laughs> and I made a lot of mistakes. Um, and, and of course, I, I left that position to have children. I, th I think that was probably the biggest mistake I made, as I sh probably should have just stuck with it. Um, and I think when I was growing up, taking on leadership roles was really difficult for me. And what we want to do is if a girl wants to do something when she's younger and her mates are saying, um, you know, you can't do that, you're a girl, come to Women on Mars because we're going to tell you that's not true. You know, we're going to set you up with maybe with a role model or a mentor, someone, uh, maybe someone your same age because really the best role models are their peers who's already done it, who's you know, proven, proven the track record, et cetera, et cetera. Same with work and communities. We all have this. And I was... So surprised to, to learn about this, which is, um, and I'll talk about the contributors of this, but there's scientists that work at NASA, female scientists that work at NASA who went to Stanford University and are sharing with me their stories at Stanford University being turned away from their degree. And one of them, a huge contributor to Women on Mars is uh, Dr. Sandra Kaufman. She's part of the MAVEN mission, if you just heard Kelsey's uh, talk. Um, she has a whole TED talk about her experience. She was from Costa Rica. A, um, a child of a single mother who told her to go for her dreams. She went to university to become an electrical engineer and she was told by a counselor, mm, electrical engineering isn't for women. Why don't you do industrial engineer? And she did. She went to in industrial engineer for three years and wasted three years of her time. She regrets it. She just, I just had dinner with her the other day and she tell, continues to tell me the story. It's, you know, this is what we want to prevent. She eventually did go and, ch and change her major back to electrical en engineering, but it took her that much longer. And this happened to me. I remember being, uh, going to my university and telling my counselor or advisor, I want to become a geologist. Oh, the math is really hard. Are you sure you want to be a geologist? Uh, I remember um, mm, once I was a geology student, my advisor who <laughs> graduated from Stanford and was a female was also not very supportive. So this is what I don't understand, is women being, not being supportive of other, other women. And I think it was um, Madeleine Albright, uh, I think she was working for the Clinton administration saying, and I apologize if this offends anyone in a Catholic university, but there's a special kind of hell for a woman who doesn't support another woman. Um, and, and your communities, take leadership roles in your communities. Basically, as a woman, just be a leader because that's really what's gonna make a difference for other women. Uh, create a community of teamwork to empower each other, and this is something that we want to do online, is create an online community of this. And of course, every team, you know, being someone at the Mars Society, and you do a crew rotation at the Mars Desert Research Station, <coughs> you need a patch. <laughs> so we created this, Women on Mars, and we put out te teams, tech, engineering, art, math, and science. And then finally, Mars. Um, Mars, so opportunity for all, and I, of course I didn't put um, Mars as it is today, I put Mars possibly 100 years from now when it's terraformed, um, something to look forward to, something to make it real, something to think, hey, this is, can happen, this, is, this could happen soon and we want to think about it now um, in creating a, a new humanity. It's an opportunity for all and I want that to include women and minorities and I want women to have an equal standing. 
um, in, in creating a future for humanity on Mars. So what does that mean, a new humanity on Mars? Well, what is it that I want to do? I would love to create a think tank of women leaders from all disciplines, because um, I don't think it's just science and engineering. I mean, Dr. Zubin has always taught me that. It's going to take a full spectrum of skills and talents to get humans to Mars, and I absolutely agree with him. It's not just the engineers, the scientists, the PhD. It's going to just anyone who says, yes, we can, and let's do it and take some action. That's what I like, and that's what I appreciate about the Mars Society most of all. Uh, promote sharing and collaboration. Encourage discussion and debating. I'd like us to learn how to, how to, have a, how to talk about something that we might have opposing views on. Um, and, I'm, and us, I mean women on Mars. I, me, I mean me. <laughs> uh, request respect for each other's ideas, beliefs, and views. Uh, see ourselves as capable and valued, and also be that. I think that's half the battle is for women, is we have to see ourselves first as we are capable, we are valued. And uh, then others see us as that. And I, I know, speaking from experience, that's something that I struggle with quite often. So uh, document and archive women's input on the type of culture and humanity that they want to create on Mars. Uh, and eventually, once we've um, gathered all this information together, is create a constitution for Mars from a woman's point of view, essentially the foremothers of Mars. And hopefully, you know, it gets ado adopted. Who knows? That would be a, a wonderful end goal. So just have some images of our website. We do have a website, womenonmars.org. A little homage to Kim Stanley Robinson, red, green, and blue Mars. Um, our logo, which is uh, Women, Teams, and Mars. And a bit about who started this, obviously that's me. I'm the founder and an educator. I've, uh, Dr. Jen Blank is a planetary scientist out of NASA Ames. She was the one who attended at Stanford University. And um, I mean, just even stories about being a woman scientist at NASA. I hear a lot of that too. I work, you know, that, that, so it, it's still current today. It hasn't gone away. Uh, Dr. Sandra Kaufman, she's the MAVEN program manager and chief engineer uh, for our organization. She's here at NASA Goddard. Um, uh, Scott Davis is a computer scientist. He also works at NASA Ames in Silicon Valley. He's uh, our, web, our web administrator and, and, and when we need to create this online community, he's going to take the lead on that. Eric Mockmer, who's a brilliant visual artist and writer, he's worked with the Mars Society for as long as I know and um, has been at the HAB and done retrofitting. And and really believes in things looking good and design, and I really appreciate that and having him on board to support. And he's very, very supportive of women. And Dr. Zubrin's very supportive of women, I think, obviously, because he wouldn't have called me and asked me to become <laughs> the executive director. And he wouldn't have then, the second time around, I actually stepped up and asked to be executive director again. And then he wouldn't have said yes. And I think I did that because, and I wasn't even planning on it. <laughs> I wasn't even planning on it, but I think <sighs> Cheryl Sandberg, listening to her, I was an audible book, was listening to her uh, book on Lean In, made me lean in, mm -hmm. made me step up and say, I want to be a leader for this. Was I scared? Absolutely. Am I scared now? Yes. Um, but I mean, that's, that's all part of it. You're going to be scared. And uh, what I do appreciate and what I still condone, part of what my mom on Mars is, is create a team around you to support. Thank you. And, um, and that's, that's the whole idea. And I have a really strong team around me right now, and I'm really appreciative for it. And the Mars Society um, has really been doing great. I'm really proud of them. Uh, so what do I need? What do we need? How can you help? This is the whole point of this. Uh, we need, most importantly, supportive, action-oriented, can-do people. I don't want to, you know, that's what we want. And I think that's what the Mars Society creates. Um, you know, volunteers, we could use, still use help with web design and definitely video. This, this day and age, you know, the, I think video is what most people kind of connect with and use on a daily basis, if not a minute by minute basis. Uh, blogs and contribu contributors, uh, PR communication, outreach and education, organization and admin. We, need to, we have ideas for designing and producing challenges and competitions. That's something we want to do as a NorCal Mars Society member out of Silicon Valley. We did all kinds of, I, I actually tested telerobotics for NASA Ames uh, at the MDRS. We would love to do some sort of robotics challenge that only had women teams. 
or we're fine to have boy, boys on the teams as well, but we want women leaders of those teams. So that's one of the ideas that we want to implement. And that's things that I've done before. You know, we have the URC in the, in the, in the US out of Utah. We have the ERC in Poland coming up September 5th and 6th. Um, I, I'm starting to create a URC or, or a University Rover Challenge out of the UK. I have got uh, guys in Manchester who are fighting up a bit to get that started. And I would like to have maybe the first female team to do a robotics, be a part of that robotics competition because I don't know if that actually has existed yet. Um, and of course, if you'd like to get involved, you can go to womenonmars.org slash contact and there's a web form that you can fill out or you can email us at hello at womenonmars.org. Thank you. You mean like working together, surviving? Yeah. 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 Is that what yeah, you mean? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it is. It would be on Mars, wouldn't it? Um, that's a great idea. Is how to work together. I mean, I know when I was uh, at the Mars Desert Research Station with a crew of Robert said, "You're the you're the executive director. You have to do a crew rotation." So I did, but I didn't get to choose my own team. I didn't know any of them, um, and it was difficult to get along with anyone and get our tasks done and work together because. When you're at the Mars Desert Research Station, you get up at eight, it's you're, you've got a schedule, you've got to get things done, you've got to please the, the research work that you're doing, and you've got to make sure it's all tight and maintained, and, and, and then you go to bed and you're exhausted, you're out in the field maybe for six hours of the time, getting in and out of suits, you know, it's, it's work. And if you don't get along with your crew, <laughs> you, you can't get anything done if you don't get along with your crew, it sucks. So, um, if that's what you mean by collaboration and to survive, that's <coughs> extremely important, and that would be great to make it a challenge. I don't know how. If you have any ideas, send us a send us some info. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, in the one of the previous panels uh, that we had with Joe Hill, uh, there was an almost disturbing tone that he raised that the mission to Mars very national, the mission is international, very closed, competitive. Um, uh, the China American thing. Yeah. yeah. The, I mean the subtitle of this. I live in the UK, okay. and I think it's a great place to be to get the attention of the world. Um, and I'm definitely, I'm an American, uh, but no, I, I think <coughs> it's going to take the world. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to work with the Europe. And, and also, bef prior to this, in my interim, I was the Senior Officer for International Development. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lucinda. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>